an earth age before this one. That explains why that many things will carbon date or otherwise. Uh, Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Hey, we're ready to get back into our Father's Word, the book of Genesis. Beresh is in the Hebrew tongue, meaning in the beginning. And we had covered that first chapter. And isn't it strange? We found out there was an earth age before this one. That explains why that many things will carbon date or otherwise uh, uh, into the millions of years. And uh, it's explained right in God's Word, if we just take the time to cover it. We had passed the sixth day, and we're going to open in chapter 2. We'll be on the seventh day. God has already created male and female in the image of God and the Elohim, which is to say God and His children, the angels. What He's saying is, let's make them look just like we look here. Okay? And then naturally, um, everyone had to pass through this earth age one time, one time only. So with that having been said, chapter 2, verse 1, let's go with it. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Now, I want you to think on that a moment, meditate on it, let it sink in. The heaven was finished, and the earth was finished, and the host of them. What does host mean? Let, let's pull it up from the manuscripts. Um, we've got us a little zadi there, and it's saba, zadba. Uh, it's, and actually it's feminine, believe it or not. That should make you ladies uh, real happy there. And it's za uh, from, and it comes from 6333, a mass of persons or figuratively things, especially uh, regularly organized for war are an army. What it is, it's a family. It's the family of God. That, that'll do it. We can pass with that. What does that mean? We'll stop and think. The heaven was finished, the earth was finished, and the people were finished. Uh, the, that is to say, um, the souls were ready for this earth age. Now, God had created animals, and then he cre and fish, birds, then he created man. Then he, he will now rest. Uh, and he looked at every race, and it was good. It was really good. So with that thought in mind, let's go on with verse 2. This, the, why did I cover that first verse? Many people ask me, why do you say all souls were created at one time? They were all finished, and all the host of them. That's all the people that will ever be in either one of them. Verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. Now, I leave it to you, is the seventh day, what is one day with God? We covered it in the first lecture of this book. Paul would say, Peter rather would say in 2 Peter chapter 3, I would not have you ignorant of the fact that one day with God is a thousand years with man. So actually, he really rested, if it were one of God's days, a millennium, all right? Verse 3, and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, set it aside, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. He was pleased with it. Now. I want to, for the sake only of the higher critic, to say, I know that we're going from P to J here. You don't have to remind me. I'm well aware of it, very familiar with the manuscripts, so, um, uh, and no more, less said about it, the better. Verse 4, these are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heaven. This word generation would better be translated history because we're talking about heaven and earth, not entities. So th this is the history 
of the earth, meaning back to Genesis verse 1 and 2, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, period. The earth came, became void and without form. So he's saying this is the history of not only this earth age, but the age from before, beginning back with chapter 1. I, I just prefer you do not overlook that. Verse 5, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every, what would that be then? Seed, or that that is not trans, uh, uh, posed, that is to say, reproduces itself from seed, was, uh, would be a sprout, of course. And every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. That means to farm it. Now, here's where we want to be very careful. Um, we had uh, men and women that God created on the same day, on the sixth day. And that is to say he created both male and female at the same time. He put them or let them have um, liberties or to harvest the wild game, the crops and so forth that were wild. But never did he give one of those, that is to say one of the races, the duties of farming, tilling the ground, uh, to be a husbandman of the soil, all right? I want to make that real clear. Now stay with me on this. Verse 6. But there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. This is, uh, consider it to do, but bear in mind, until the flood of Noah, we'll still have a firmament overhead. Just bear that in mind. Many wonder, where did all that water come from? Verse 7, very important. I want your full attention. We're going to take a little lesson in Hebrew grammar here, all right? And the Lord God formed, not created, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and breathed, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now, there is something quite different about this man than the man mentioned in the 21st, 27th verse of the first chapter. It would probably serve you well if you wrote these down. You with companion Bibles, you don't have to. Your Appendix 14 will already have it recorded there for you. Adam without the article as it is utilized in verse 27 of chapter 1 means man or mankind. There's not even any gender involved in it. As a matter of fact, many times in, from the manuscripts, Adam is translated man uh, when the word in the Hebrew is Adam without the article. Now, here in this particular verse, in verse 7, this man has the article, ha, Adam, and with the article, it denotes the man, Adam, to till the soil. Now, I, I, think, it, I think you should make a note of that. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Adam, without the article, ha, which in English translated as the, okay, ha. Without the article denotes a human or mankind. It doesn't mean the Adam which Christ would say that uh, he was the son of Adam or be called the son of Adam because it would be this Adam, ha Adam, through which Christ would come not the man created without the article in verse 27 of chapter 1. I really know of no one else that teaches this at, at publicly. I'm going to say publicly. It is taught, but not publicly, um, uh, at least to my knowledge, by anyone else. I make no apologies for teaching it, even though I have had a, a, a particular rabbi call me and said, you're correct, but you're going to be criticized 
and even throw it for even throwing racial overtones into this. Hey, I teach God's word. I make no apology for teaching it as it is written, for that's the way God wanted it taught. And if I suffer or fall out from it, hey, it doesn't bother me. At least I will have known that I taught the truth. Now, there is more. I, I will even go further to say that even the companion Bible between chapter 1 and 2 of this book will disagree with what I'm saying in part. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, I'll tell you, it's still the best study Bible you'll ever be able to touch with your hands, all right? For you, a lay person today, or most pastors, if you can understand it, I speak of the companion Bible. Now, I want to take this one step further. Again, I hope you've written down, Adam without the article denotes man or mankind in general. Number two, with the article, Adam with the article denotes the man Adam. Now, we have something here more specific than that. We have Adam not only with the article, but with the particle eth, E-T-H, and when we have the addition of eth, the particle, it's very emphatic. I, I, I could not express that enough. With both the particle, the article, and Adam, it is, I, I could even say, super um, emphatic. That we're talking about the man, this one, um, his himself. Um, there is no, the same one that is set aside here because of the, the particle and the article. What, what do we have? Let's, let's simplify it in case I'm confusing some with particle, article, and the atom. The particle is E-T-H-F. The article is ha, H-A, which is the um, and um, F is always emphatic whether it's talking about Israel, the church, the family, or whatever. That's grammar in, from the Hebrew tongue. So many of you have difficulty separating the man from verse 27 of chapter 1 from the man in verse 7 of chapter 2. I hope you won't have that difficulty again. For you that have not caught all of it, I'm going one more time. In verse 7, we have eth ha adam, which is emphatically the tiller of the ground, the man, which Christ would be called the son of Adam. Christ would even be called the second Adam. And, I, and that comes to mind from, to, to me at this moment from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But one more time through it. Adam, the, the word, first what does the word Adam mean in the Hebrew tongue? It means ruddy complected, all right? The other races were created on the sixth day. And there was a ruddy complected man committed, uh, formed on that day as well. Um, and uh, I'm not going past that detail, but back to the particle and the article. Adam, without the article, denotes man or mankind, a human being. When you're reading along and it says, and God saw man on the earth, it means it was mankind, all right? But as it is used in seven, Adam with the article denotes the man Adam. All right. Now, God even goes further than that so that you get the distinction in verse 7 that he places the particle eth, E-T-H, before the article eth, ha, adam, which makes it very emphatic so that you would not go wrong. So, uh, never let it be said that at least it has not been taught to you. What makes the difference between the man to till the soil than the man that would hunt, fish, 
Uh, even though I know a few of those that like to till the soil, that like to hunt and fish, but he has other work to do as well. He chose this specific man because through this genealogy of Adam would come Christ. That's important because he, that would bring forth the Savior and round out God's overall plan. Okay, I hope you've got that. Verse 8, let's continue on. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed, not created, formed. 9. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I'm going to save a good education for you on trees from the Hebrew tongue uh, in, until the next lecture. But let me just say this in passing. The good trees that are for food are the trees that you still, nothing is new under the sun. We still have them with us today, um, uh, fruit trees. But the tree of life is a different subject. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a different uh, type, let's put it that way. The tree of life, of course, the tree that gives life is Jesus Christ. The tree of the knowledge of both good, I mean, Satan knows how to be good, he was created good, but he is evil. Um, that tree happens to be Satan. Now, in the next lecture, We'll, take, we'll, we'll document all that from the Word of God. But I have another, I want the point made of the, the uh, emphatic design of God that you realize He wants you to recognize this man, all right? So He gives him, when God makes a statement like this, then it becomes law. Understand that. Verse 10, And a river went out of, of Eden, the water to water the garden and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. Verse 11, I'll read over these uh, rather rapidly. The name of the first is Pison. That is it with uh, which compasseth uh, circles the whole land of Havilah where there is gold. 12. And the gold of that land is good. Uh, there is Delium and the Onyx Stone, 13. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, if we were to go by the geographical locations that we know Ethiopia of as today, then you can pretty well begin to fix some of these rivers that could have been, I repeat, could have been, a part of the area. Next verse, we'll nail it. 14. And the name of the third river is Hedekal, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. This is why that many people feel that the Tigris, where the Tigris and the Euphrates and, and the others run together there, that that was the geographical location of the Garden of Eden. Well, was it? Well, God has a way of after the flood of Noah um, of uh, changing things. So, but it would certainly indicate so. Okay, 15. And the Lord took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Now, I want you to note, it, um, many of you that have the greens um, in a linear, you will have one of the best Hebrew sets of Hebrew manuscripts that are available today. I'll even go further than that, the best. And you will be able to follow whether uh, in English, it's rather difficult, but it kind of even brings it through. The, the man, that's Ha'adam, okay? Check it out. It'll make you feel real good. It has the article. That's the one he put in the garden, in other words. The word man being Adam, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, that's to say Ha'adam, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely. Feed yourself. We still do to this day. 
17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this is twice for emphasis, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, did Adam eat? die in the day that he ate of the tree? No, he didn't. Did Eve die in the day she ate of the tree? Well, not instantly, because don't forget how long a day is with God. That's why no one ever lived over a thousand years. That's one day. And after the fall, no one passed that mark. Verse 18, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Now, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Here we got Adam in the garden, and God created male and female back in this other place. So let that again let you know we're talking about two different peoples here. And God does not differentiate between them. He's not talking about classes here. So that's one reason I don't want you to ever tag racist onto this. It rather protects the races, the race is, whereby they can understand our loving Father that He created us as we are, and as it, in the closing chapter, He looked and it was good. But we got one man here that doesn't have a female, all right? It's Ha'adam. The others do. He, he cre God created the male and the female in verse 27 of the prior chapter uh, simultaneously. They were both created at the same time. I'll read it for you. God, so God created man in his own image, in the image to look like them, and the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. All right. Well, here we got old Ha'adam, if Ha'adam, without a wife. All right, let's see what we can do for him. Um, next verse, please. 19. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Whoa, now does that kind of... Does that kind of not square with you? I mean, we know from chapter 1 that God created the birds and the fowls and, and the animals before he ever created man. And now it says he created Adam, Ha'adam, and here he's creating some more animals and bringing them to Adam to name them. So we got something that doesn't square, except for one thing. Supposition, my opinion. Adam then had created the animals that he would utilize to till the soil. That is to say, domestic animals. That's to say, horses. Uh, he certainly didn't create a mule, and I'm not going into animal husbandry here to explain about the mule and the horse. He did create the donkey, and he created the here, chick, 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 the chickens, and so forth, the farm animals, all right? After he created the man. I think it's important that you note these things because it's clearly written in the Word of God and it helps you make the division whereby we see that God does not play favoritism with His people. He's simply setting aside one through which would come the Savior whereby all races upon following that Savior can have eternal life, period. There was no curse put on any people. It's a sin for anyone to teach that certain actions of these Adamic people brought about certain races, that God doesn't deal in unnatural acts. He doesn't curse innocent people. And don't ever believe some preacher that would tell you that. He created every race the way it was on the sixth day, and it was good. So, okay, here we go. Uh, created Adam. Uh, I don't know why he did give him the animals before he gave him the woman. Now, why was that? I have no idea. But uh, now he'll get around to the woman here in a minute. 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. 
beast of the field means living beings of the world, all right? But for Adam, there was not found and help me for him. Still all by his lonesome. 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. He had surgery, okay? 22. And the rib, I want you to make a note, the rib which the Lord had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Now, I want to, uh, um, I'll let you check it out for yourself in the Hebrew, but the prime on this word rib simply means the curve. I do not believe that he literally, I mean, man translated it rib. It's curve, all right? And their rib does curve, given. But man has something else that is more in the line of genetics that decides male and female, which we have learned through uh, medical technology uh, in the past uh, several years, and it's called DNA. Do you know that DNA has a curve? Have you ever heard of the helix curve? And sometimes you just take a few chromosomes and what have you here and away there, and well, presto, we got male and we got female. Basically, they're both the same. But certainly through the curve, it is very possible, and I'm, I'm only saying it is very possible, that this is the correction that God made, whereby he created a helpmate for this one Adam, as the female on the sixth day, bringing forth a womb in this being, this soul, that would enable each of the host to be born of woman, innocent, not remembering anything from before, to decide whether they would love God or Satan. Hey, it's all, you, you make your own bed, you make your own life. If it's hell, you made it that way, all right? Well, uh, I didn't exactly make it that way. It was my husband's fault. Hey, you chose him, honey. You know, he was your choice. Uh, you should have left him a long time, maybe before he got made life hell for you. You know, I, I don't know. I'm not giving anyone any advice. I'm just saying we make our own bed. Uh, we make our own hot coals, and we're the one that walks in it. So that's just the way it is. And uh, you can either love God and find out, hey, well, we, we've got a pretty good path here. It seems like when we love him, as I'm saying, being born innocent through this womb, um, it made man flesh, and y'all, we're going to find out before we get to chapter 6 that it kind of grieved God a little bit that he had gone through this plan, but he had already, and the stage was set, and so it continues even to this day. But uh, I truly believe in my own heart and mind, and I wouldn't want to shake you, some yo-yo sent me a letter here in the past week saying, um, Revelation 22, where it says, any man that changes the word of God, you know, and so he said, this settles it. Well, um, the poor man is a little probably uh, biblically illiterate as far as the Hebrew language is concerned and doesn't know what he's talking about. So, but it's not that critical a thing, and it doesn't make that much difference. But I like to, I like to understand things. I like to understand how God does things. Therefore, we can better grasp what it is God would have us do. And uh, knowledge and wisdom is a beautiful thing. But I truly believe that this is what God took from Adam and, um, and formed the beautiful woman body. And, and after all, I could say, as often I do, the word curve, he certainly put more curves in the woman's body, thank God, than he did man's, all right? And thank God for it. They're, they're a lot prettier than we are. 
greatest gift God ever gave man. All right? Okay, enough said, verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And um, so it is, but it was good for you to remember um, who, who took her out of man. Was, and do we have an article here with this? Yes. 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. That's very important. That's why that marriage is a union and God is giving you even in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 2 some of the best marital advice you can ever have in your life. Is mom and daddy don't have all that much to do with it. All right, You leave them and you become one unit and you please each other and with wisdom figure all things out to your satisfaction because in as much as you are one flesh, one flesh should never do anything to that flesh that offends the, uh, I'll say the right side of the flesh should do nothing that offends the left and vice versa. It's got to get along. And you are a oneness within each other and whatever, um, uh, enough said. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. They become one flesh. Verse 25, to complete the chapter. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They had done nothing to be ashamed of. Sin brings forth shame. And um, unfortunately, in the next lecture, we get into where sin does enter. We will, we will be talking about trees. I'm going to give you quite an education in trees. Uh, symbolism and what actually happened in the garden. Up to this point, and we have completed chapter 2, you haven't heard the word apple or orange yet. And I got some news for you. You're not going to hear apple in the next lecture, scripturally speaking. That's not the kind of tree God wants you to be aware of. So, in recapping real quickly, any time that Adam is utilized in the Hebrew language with the article, it is the man Adam. If it is without the article, it is man, it is human or mankind. With both the particle and the article, if ha Adam, it's emphatically the Adam that God created to till the soil and to bring forth through the woman, Mother Eve, who will be called the mother of all living for one reason only. Because through Eve's womb, umbilical cord to umbilical cord would come Christ, Messiah, Yeshua. And you are either in him or you're not living because you're not going to be with us long. Eve then becomes the mother of all eternal living because the Savior would come through her. It's important. That's why Satan always hassles Eve and gives her much trouble when the opportunity prevails itself. So, without the article, mankind. With the article, specifically Adam with the particle and article, emphatically the specific Adam. And don't ever let anyone take that away from you. All right, bless your hearts. You listen a moment, won't you please?